Welcome back to Bali Insiders Podcast. Hey, Carl. Hey, Em. I'm still getting used to us actually recording in the same space here in our brand new home at Lighthouse Studios and not being crammed in my wardrobe, hoping my dog doesn't bark. (laughs) I know. How good is it to be in our new home? And hi to all of those of you tuning in to our new videos so you can get the full Bali Insiders experience and watch as we record too. So today we have a fabulous guest who has built a really booming business uh, around her love for photography and interior design. If you follow Bali Interiors on Instagram, I'm sure you're already familiar with Shayla Mann and some of her gorgeous work. So Shayla's interior photography has been published in worldwide press from Vogue Living to Al Deco, just to name a few. Shayla's going to share with us today about building her business in Bali, how it's evolved and her own experience of building her dream house and the new exciting project she's working on. Welcome Shayla, you are our very first guest at our brand new home at Lighthouse Studios here in Bali, so thank you for agreeing to be on the podcast today. You're welcome, thanks for having me. (laughs) Our pleasure. Pleasure. So we start all of our interviews with our fast five questions, so are you ready to go? I'm ready. Okay. Bring it on. So when did you first visit Bali? Uh, I think it was 2009, if I'm not wrong, yeah. Okay. Okay. And what's your favorite area of Bali? That is really hard because I live in Babakan, which is near Chenggu, but every time I go anywhere of Bali, I always love it. So Bali. (laughs) Bali as a whole. (laughs) (laughs) And what is your favorite restaurant in Bali? Uh, It changes, but currently I've been loving going to shelter and school. Mm, Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. Two great ones. Amazing. What is your favorite local food? Uh, nasi champur. I'm a big fan of nasi champur. I have pretty much have it every midday, so I eat local every day. And for those who don't know, that means a mix, a mix of rice and other local dishes. Correct. So you yeah, get a bit rice, of everything. A bit of veggies, a <laughs> bit of chicken, confiters. Delicious. Yeah, delicious. Uh, and what do you love most about Bali? Um, I guess the people at the end of the day, the people makes Bali and the people are so welcoming and beautiful and forgiving and patient mm. and I think that's what brings makes Bali such a special place yeah great yeah so now we've got all that important info out of the way <laughs> <laughs> so you said you visited around the, for the first time around 12-ish years ago yeah can you talk us through what led you to the the big move to Bali what was the build up there and what did that look like um, so I used to do production in Bali a long time ago when I used to do jewelry design. Um, and I used to come to Bali to do my production and we loved it here. So we said, you know what, let's just, let's just give it a go. Let's just try one year and see if we like it, if we can make it work. Uh, so we had a kind of like a sabbatical and we decided to move. It was just, we just loved it here. And when we used to come here, Chenggu wasn't what it is mm, now. Yeah. It was nothing, there was yes. literally nothing. And we loved it because it was nothing. We <laughs> loved that quiet uh, place. Obviously over the years it, it's changed dramatically, but yeah, we just we just thought, you know, we were a bit of, over the rat race in, in Sydney. Yeah. And we just needed a change of pace. Um, and we thought, well, the kids are young, let's just do it because it's just going to get harder as they grow. So essentially it started as a, as a gap year that yeah. turned yeah. into a gap life. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's not much of a gap. <laughs> but yes, yes, correct. Oh, yeah. wow. Nice. And so when, you, so when you got here, explain to us kind of how maybe you set up. Um, your, you know, your life and, and what you first started doing when you got here. Yeah. So my husband is a massive researcher. Like he researched literally every <laughs> dot. I just basically turn up here. So, uh, <laughs> so nice. here now. I just live here now. lovely. <laughs> but yeah, he researched everything and he put so much detail on which area and where and how and, you know, all that stuff. As soon as we moved in here, we started looking for a house. So we kind of rented like a little, it was kind of like a guest house. It was a really cute little bungalow, like with a shared pool. And we had there for a month. And then while we were there, we said, well, we need to find a house. So, you know, now there's a lot more information. This was like mm. seven years ago. So yeah. There wasn't much. So we just 
you know, looked through Facebook and looked through houses and we basically visited like 50 houses in yeah. a month, which was really the exhausting, villa exhausting <laughs> especially with a new baby. And people will tell you, you know, you want in a three-bedroom house with this and that. And it was like a one-bedroom with no pool. And, and you're like, why are you bringing me here? You just wasted my time, you know? So you can relate to that. Which yep. is very annoying. Um, and, yeah, so that month we looked for a place. And then we found one, uh, which was in Paranling Jong, uh, which at that time it was... That was very was, quiet. There was no one. It yeah. was only somebody markets. There was nothing. Literally, there wow. was nothing around. It was surrounded by rice fields. And everyone was like, why are you living so far away? And I was like, we love it here, you know. Uh, and yeah, so that's how we, we set it up. And then we just, you know, it was kind of supposed to be a gap year. So my husband was like, I don't want to work for a whole year. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, yeah, me neither. And then within a month, I was just like, I need something to yeah. do. <laughs> because this is boring. Yeah. You know, like I can't just have piña coladas <laughs> yeah. at my pool every day. Like what? that's depressing, yeah. you know? It goes from being good to being depressing. Yeah. So I decided to start a blog called Bali Interiors. So that's how Bali Interiors was born. Did it start as an Instagram page or your actual blog? It was um, a blog. blog. It actually started... I decided I wanted to start something. I was a bit bored of jewelry design and I was like, I want something that will get me out of the house because at that time, Paralin Jong was out in the, mm. in the sticks, you know? Yeah. So we decided to, um, I decided to, okay, what can I do? I could do this, I could do that, I could do that. And I said, I'm going to start something with the least amount of money. Yes. So I started yeah. a blog yeah. and it cost me $50. To register at balanceyears.com. <laughs> and I started a blog and with a little iPhone, old iPhone, I started just going and taking photos with my phone of places. So prior to this, you weren't a photographer? No, no. I yeah. wasn't. So I did design and fashion and clothing production. That was my background. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so it wasn't, but my family comes from an interior design an architecture background. Yeah. So you had an design. eye. So I had like, you know, grown up, I've gone to beautiful places and art galleries and home workshops. That was my outings for the weekend, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I grew up in that world. Um, so yeah, I decided to, let's just, I, I just came here and I was like, oh my God, there's so many beautiful places. Yeah. And at that time there was no one documenting it. Mm. Uh, everyone was doing the kind of influencer thing of themselves in the photo, in the space, but more about themselves. And I was like, I don't want to show myself. I want to show the place. Yes. Um, so I, that's how it started. I was like, I want to actually show the beautiful places that are in Bali because I think before I came to Bali, I had no idea what Bali was like. Mm -hmm. I had a very different perspective of what the media show, what Bali is. And yeah. we, for years, we had absolutely no interest on coming here at all. We're like, we're the last place we we'll ever visited. You know, we travel all through yeah. Southeast Asia, except for Bali, we're like, we have, we're not interested. And then when we came for production, we saw this other side of Bali that was like, oh, this is not portrayed in the media. Mm -hmm. And this is not portrayed anywhere. And I was like, this is really beautiful and it should be shown. So I just basically set out um, to show a different side of Bali that no one has shown before. Yeah. And I think I've succeeded so far. Oh, I <laughs> definitely. I think you definitely have. And the places in Bali keep getting more beautiful. And yeah. More yes. beautiful. And I think I've said this trend of like outdoing each other. Yeah. But you have. You have. You have. Sorry. It's created, I'm finally responsible for it. It's created a monster in me because yeah. now I follow, obviously follow Bali interiors and, and all that you do. And like I go into all the – like I look at everything and I'm like – I, now I want this for my villa. My husband's like, stop looking. <laughs> <laughs> stop I'm it. comparing to all these beautiful I villas. And I, and I think it's, it's, it's funny, like, when you will talk about actually the, the build afterwards, but, you know, building a house and building a place, most in the world, most people in the world just don't ever get to do that. Mm. And it seems easy, but yeah. it's not. Mm -hmm. it's and not. I think, obviously, I come at the very end, I'm like, I'm here, take the beautiful photos, but I didn't suffer throughout, you know, the building process. You know, I get the best part of the whole experience of building a house, but yeah, it's not easy. So let's go into your build. So you've built a beautiful house. You have your own studio in your house. You have rice field views. And I'm sure anybody who just has started following you recently sees your house and they think, oh my goodness, I want to build a house like that yeah. too. But let's 
talk us through because I know um, <laughs> we chatted a lot during your yeah. build process and it's it's yes. not as easy as just walking into yeah. that beautiful house at the end. Yeah, it's not easy, um, especially when you're on a budget. And even if you're not on a budget, actually, I know sometimes you can pay a lot of money and actually don't get the results mm. that you were after. Mm. Um, it's Bali's like, well, there's some places in the world that are like that kind of developing countries where there's not that many regulations anyone can just decide i'm going to be a builder and to set up a company <laughs> and start building and pretend to be a builder when they actually have no experience or you know or no you know university degrees or anything yeah. that shows yes i know how to do that like yeah. in the normal world when yes. you're an architect you sign a contract and that contract says if anything goes wrong I'm responsible. I'm responsible for it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of cowboys here that either pretend to be architects or have studios that are not really architect studios, but provide architecture as a, as a side Service. business when they actually should be really careful because you have a responsibility. It's like being a doctor. Yes. You know, like when you're a doctor, you sign that you will be a doctor forever. This mm. is your profession. And if someone needs to be saved the life, you need to go you and save the life. Yeah. Well, there's and an it, element of trust, isn't there? You yeah, know? absolutely. In architecture, it's the same thing. You're responsible. Yeah. If that building falls down, you're the responsible one. So it comes to building a house, which is, <laughs> hasn't fallen down, thank goodness, <laughs> yet. But, you know, I, I did have an architect and she was really good, uh, but I had a builder that was a little bit you know, not so great. Um, but yes, it was uh, quite a nightmare, to be honest. It started really well and then it didn't. And then we realized there was something was off. And, you know, unless you were there like almost every day, but sometimes, you know, we go once a week and suddenly like, where is this person? They're like, oh, no, he's, you know, he had an operation. had a, And mm. it was all these lies mm. that he was roping us in and ended up, and then ended up, okay, at the end of the day, like at the end he kind of left the build almost at the very end of it yeah. but we were left very worried because all these things were going wrong and we were scared of like is this building gonna fall down yeah. you know so yeah. we had to bring an expert to kind of do a surveillance of our whole building just to make sure is this just gonna collapse like mm -hmm. is it that bad and they were like it's not that bad at the end of the day he did a good job in the engineering part yeah. it was just all this little dodgy things that like he wasn't paying people and he was telling us that he paid and right. you know so and these sort of um adventures happen all the time in bali so and it's it's yeah it's not a sole story is it no oh. this happens and i know people that have put full deposits and pay two hundred thousand dollars and you know the builders run away yeah uh, or they have massive problems with the construction or the interior design or the architecture. So you just have to be really careful at the end of the day. And one of the, we've spoken to a few people that have built here. And I think one of the bits of advice that keeps coming out is really obviously do your research Absolutely, on the builders yeah. and ask people. So, yeah. you know, speak to people that have done it before Yes. and get their advice maybe their recommendations because you know some sure. you know finding someone new and thinking that there may be some undiscovered architect or builder to yeah. get it cheaper yeah is probably and, not the way to I go know. and sometimes you know those undiscovered yes they're good yes and some people that you think is really good they're not so good yeah. mm. you know so it's a lot of smoke and mirrors mm. i think in in bali and you really have to do your research um, not just ask one person, ask multiple people, go and yeah. see the past projects, mm. ask the owners, the people that actually pay for that build, that architecture, that design, how was the whole process, mm. yeah. you know, because at the end of the day, you don't want a nightmare for like two or three years. Yeah. You can save all that stress and it's really stressful to build. No, everyone in the world Anywhere is stressful. In the world. Yes. And yes. here I think it's more stressful because you have no backup. There's nowhere you could go yeah. to a council and say, this person is super dodgy. Yeah. They're screwing me over. There's no one. You lose yeah. the money, Can't you lose the that. money. Yeah. So, so in saying that, so one tip obviously is to research and to talk to people who have done past projects with any sure. of your suppliers. But what other little tips? Like I know you mentioned paying deposits and things like that. Yeah. Um, one thing I always tell people is, because I love to pay my bills really quick. Yeah. Right. But I've learned here, don't you ever pay 100%. No. Yes. <laughs> no, you can't pay 100%. You have to pay. Obviously, you always need a deposit so they yeah. can start buying materials. And you 
have to have like thresholds. So, okay, once it's filled, then you get the next payment. Once yeah. it's filled, saying that it still doesn't work 100% because I've known people that they were super late in the build and then they would say to the builder, it's like, well, we had a penalty that if you didn't finish this project by this day, mm. I wasn't going to pay you this much. And they're like, well, then we walk away. And mm. then you're like, well, that sucks. Because <laughs> then I have Where's to my leverage? Yeah. There's yeah. no leverage. There's yeah. no leverage. So yeah. that's why it's better, obviously, put all those things in place, put a contract in place, get a notary in Bali, uh, make the contract in Bahasa, because otherwise it's not worth Legal, anything. Yeah. Um, and just more than anything, you just need to do research before yeah. you know and saying that someone could be really really good and suddenly it goes bad so yeah. you can be unlucky as well but also you could be lucky so research research yeah. research 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 research, 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 research. To, talk, to talk to people yes um your photography business uh we loved watching that unfold and see all the amazing places that you're photographing products you're photographing villas you're photographing restaurants resorts You've also broken into that um, industry in a time where, especially in Bali, we have a lot of influencers who are offering, we'll take photos for you yeah. in exchange for a free stay. Yeah. How was that process trying to get people to start actually paying you for your work as opposed to trying to con continually give you a free stay. Yeah. Bali Insiders podcast is proudly sponsored by Lighthouse Studios right here in Bali. This space has been specifically designed for entrepreneurs, podcasters, coaches, and educators of all kinds. You can record podcasts just like ours, as well as masterclasses, social media content, and so much more. They have awesome customizable studios to choose from. And most importantly, they take care of absolutely everything. The cameras, the microphones, the lights, even if you wish, the editing. They make it so, so easy. And as well as the studios, they have a co-working cafe and some of the best food and coffee on the island of Bali. We highly recommend that you come in for a tour and have a chat about how you can create your own epic video and audio content. You can visit them on Instagram at Lighthouse Studios Bali or jump on their website, wearelight.house. I think for me it was about getting the comp. I, I, I'm not like the millennials or whatever, you know, like that they have that confidence and just walk in, they're like, you should pay me this much. I was the opposite. I was like, I don't feel comfortable asking for money unless I know that my product is good. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a build up of doing things for free. But actually, I think everyone starts in a, yes. a bit the yeah. same way. You know, when, when I got to the point that I was like, okay, I'm good enough. I'm proud of my product. I know that I can deliver something good. I'm not scared that people are like, this is terrible, you know? So I was like, once I was confident with my product, I was like, okay, I think I need to start putting a price. Because at the end of the day, it's a lot of work. And mm, post-production, yeah. taking the photos might take you an hour, but post-production could take you 12 hours, 20 hours, you know, just yeah. one hour of work. So, you know, once you said, okay, now I have to value what I do, and it is a lot of work, so I should be remunerated for it. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was just, it was just time, you know, I just did it for like a couple of years of, you know, basically working for free, just because I wanted to do my blog and build yeah. my blog. And then I said, okay, I think I need to be paid. Yeah. yeah. For my time, you know? Yeah. And then that, you know, creates your business and then creates exactly. momentum. It was a similar way that I started yeah. as well. But I agree. I always think of those first years as like the degree, the yes. university degree. Yeah, it's like a work experience, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, that yeah. you just have to learn. And I did, I learned a lot. You know, those years I ended up meeting a stylist, which was instrumental in, in what I do now because she really taught me so much about taking photographs and styling. Mm. So I did work with her for like a year or two and really like elevated what I do now because there's a lot of things that I do that other photographers don't do yeah. and that's what makes me different that makes your else. service different yes. yeah. yeah your yeah. apprenticeship yes well, yes there's nothing better than learning on the job that's no. for sure you know? yeah. yeah and I'm definitely one of those people that need to learn on the job um, yeah. yeah you know I can't I'm just read a book I need to actually go do it and practice and be it's the creative minds <laughs> I'm the same <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so 
your photography Bali tier is all going really well and you've got some exciting new projects at the moment as well that you've introduced over the past kind of year or so. Yeah, I've seen, yeah the Pick in Paradise you're yes. probably talking, yeah, which is I love. I've been wanting to do that for years actually. I think I've had, when I started this, I had all these visions and finally I feel like they're coming to fruition now. And yeah, one was the Pick in Paradise, which is, you know, basically showing what I do every day, which is going to people's houses and, and just being like, wow, by everything they do and all the beautiful interiors and architecture and detail. Um, so yeah, so that was finally, you know, I was able to get full-time people to work for me now, so which is great. So then we're like, okay, now we can do it. It's you amazing. Know? I yeah. love it. I'm and yeah. such a fangirl. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. actually, I feel like it's, this is the thing we're in, season three and it's finally starting to take off you know yes like well like finally because we're like why not people like this is so like for us it, it's a lot of work that goes behind yes. you know yeah. making it and also to get access to those houses not everyone wants to open your house exactly mm. not everybody yeah. wants everybody seeing every detail of their house and giving sure. away all their their trade secrets yeah and things. For sure. but I think it's a really great direction for Bali interiors because as we know, video is such a big medium yeah. now um, to share things and it's great for your audience to be able to, yeah, get access. Everybody's a bit nosy about yeah, beautiful sure. houses, I'm right? I'm totally oh. nosy. I'm like, I want to go in and have, I see like, when I see like a door that looks really nice, I'm like, I want to peek in there. Yeah. I want to like, who lives there? Can I come in, you know? But I can't, but now I have volunteers that allows do me to do that. Do you do that? that? <laughs> do you go and just knock on doors uh, if you see a beautiful no, villa? No, I, I don't, but I I want to, like, I really want to. But I have been to some places and I'm like, oh, I wonder what's behind that door. And then it comes around and someone asks me to shoot it and I'm like, finally I got to see that house. Uh, yes, yes, I really right. wanted to. I'm not that bad. I don't go knocking. <laughs> but, but I really, like, I love it. I love seeing what people have done with their houses. It's like a real passion. So yeah, And yeah. so many different styles of, yeah. of doing things. Totally. I watch one episode and I think, yes, I love that. And then I watch the next one and I was like, oh, no, minimalist. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and it's so different it's such a varied amount of design in bali which oh. because you, you can do anything you want yes. mm. that's yeah. the amazing thing that bali has that yeah. no one else has in the world like, yes. it's like i want this crazy staircase with this hanging and they're yeah. like sure we'll do it yeah you know yeah. so all these crazy dreams and crazy ideas people have they make it into a reality which makes mm. my job like a pleasure wow. because i get to see all these people's vision you know? and I think because there's so many people here from so many different places they bring their as you said for their sure. visions and their dreams and you know it's not like going into the same house in Australia for example and everything looks the same yeah. in every house you yeah. go yeah. into so you've got you know the different absolutely cultures that yeah, bring absolutely. in all the different yeah everyone, trends everyone and brings their own piece of home with them, them. yes and, and they change and they make their home like that you yeah. know and you know, I, I like after seeing some houses that look the same, you kind of get bored. I'm like, let's bring something mm. new. Let's let's see something else. What else people think about? So in saying that, what's one of the standout memories or like the craziest thing you've seen in somebody's mm. home now that you've um, peeked into so many luxurious homes? I went I went to this house, which I was thinking of maybe doing a picky paradise, but then I thought it's just too wacky. Like it was just this house. I was kind of scouting houses for it. And I was this house, and it was this crazy house, like massive, so big. I don't even know how many hours. It was like hectares, wow, huge. And it had like this kind of like building on one side, and then it had this other building on the other side with this staircase coming in the middle of it. It, it didn't work. Like that's the worst part of it. <laughs> yeah. It actually didn't work. And I was like, someone should have told them, like, this is not working at all. And it had like different like styles. It was like, it was like semi-Moroccan. Mediterranean and then something and I was like but it was just, just it was like <laughs> a big it was, hot mess and the kitchen was amazing I was like I love the kitchen was they just like got it so right but and everything else was like a complete mess and I was like I can't do it I can't I can't, I can't show I this I don't even know how to bring this, this together <laughs> this is not good and what what's been your most indulgent thing you've seen in someone's house like a gold mm. bathtub or uh, I saw well I, I shot one of uh, a client of mine Senia who does amazing stuff and she had in this house like this huge cinema room but it was massive and I was like oh my god this is amazing like 
I want that. You know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I I'm want like, that. Okay, that's on the list. Yeah, it was, I was like, okay. I should have done a in my house. It was just like, it literally felt like a cinema. Like a real cinema. Like a real yeah. cinema. Wow. I was like, this is amazing. And for me, that's like, I don't care about a gold bath. Like, it doesn't, yes. it doesn't yeah. do anything for me. But, but a real life cinema in a real Or a little bar. I went to someone architect and they have downstairs like a little mini bar for oh. themselves. I was like, this is good. Yeah, like, know, cool. yeah, yeah. like a little speakeasy and their house is like, when is my invite? <laughs> so before we do the next build or next our build, yeah. I'm going to contact <laughs> you for all the best things to put into a villa. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's what is it that you guys love mm, the yes, most? For me, right. like when I build my house, which people think it's a luxury, I build a courtyard within my house. And a lot of people are like, Why? You're wasting so much space and this. And I was like, this is a non-negotiable. And I think when you're building something, that's what my my architect was saying to me. Is it a, a negotiable or non-negotiable? And there were some things I was like, this is non-negotiable. Yeah. I want a courtyard. Yeah. I actually don't even care if I have a garden. I just want a courtyard. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's my favorite part of yeah. the house. And everyone loves it. And it's like it's literally the heart of the home. Yeah. You know, so there's some things that there might be luxury, but if for you, if mm. it satisfies whatever it is that you want yeah. and, and makes your life a better life, then don't do it. You know, who says wrong? At the yeah, end of exactly. that, it's your house. Yes, that's exactly right. Whatever's important to yeah. you. Um, so your latest business adventure is quite exciting and yes. that's your new um, Bali Interiors Retreat. Retreat. Yes. Um, so tell us a bit about how that came about. Um, and I know you've hosted your first one. You're advertising your second one now. Yeah. Um, talk us a little bit about what uh, made you decide to start doing the, the retreats. Yes. Yeah, so once again, it's this idea that I had for like many years. And I just wanted to show what I do. Like I wanted people to experience my life at the end of the day. Because I think I have a pretty cool life, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, you know, and I, super interesting. Yeah, and it's like, in, you know, if I want to do it, like if I want to do it, I know people around the world that are into interiors, into design, would love to do it too. And it's just basically, it's like an insight into my world. In I, like over the six years, I've just developed a lot of contacts. I made so many connections. I keep, I keep making connections and and meeting new people in the industry. And so many people, you know, message me and ask me, who should I contract for uh, my field? Or where do I buy this? And, who I, you know, all the time. And I'm like, you know, I've given a lot of information throughout the years, but I'm like, there's a better way to compile this. And mm. that is through experience what I experience. Meet all the people that I know. Go to the factories that I would go and, you know, Which source. Which is invaluable Which yes. is invaluable. It's literally your your black book of absolutely like, and it's mm-hmm. like contact. literally like it should cost so much money it, yeah it, it should cost way more than it actually costs because it's just years of work and years of building relationships and years of grand work mm. and you know going and discovering and talking to people and that is almost like you can't even put a price, price on no that. well because that's like factories and things like that that's people people never share that <laughs> no they never no share you know it's very secret it's secret squirrel stuff you yeah know? yeah and, also, and also getting to meet architects and interior designers that work and live here and they can not a master class but they can you know give them a talk and talk you know one-to-one and also asking how do you price things and what do you do for this and what do you do that's like I can't even describe, like, it doesn't happen very often, you know, when you get a chance to do that. And that stuff takes, as you said, years and years and years. And even from my experience with my own business, you know, we get, I get really similar questions, you know, what villa can I use? What, you know, vendors can I use? And they, who's the best? And I'm like, these are relationships that sure. I've established over years and years of working on the island. It's your IP. Exactly. So to be able to share that is yeah. is incredible. Yeah. And what an opportunity for people. As you're saying that, I'm like, oh, like when's yeah. the next one? <laughs> but it's, it is what, what, what the most thing about, we, we just had our first retreat um, and it was so much more than that at the end of the mm. day. We, we didn't, I didn't realise how fulfilling it was it was it was at the very end yeah. you know the people had such an incredible time and experience it changed their lives some of them literally their lives change after it which it's quite a big thing you know yeah. like if you're stuck in your work or you're feeling uninspired or 
you're like, I want to do it, but I don't know how to. So let me just, just show you, okay, these are all the things you can do. I'm just opening the door. You just need to walk through it now, you know, but it was just so, yeah, fulfilling for me to see all the changes and just people being, you know, because we, we talk a lot and we give advice to each other and, you know, we, you know, it's not just oh, we'll go and see it, but we have a lot of chats together, which I think it's important. And everyone was super supportive of each other, um, which was so nice. You know, there wasn't any competitiveness. It was just like, this is, this is what I'm going through. What would you guys do? So, you know, everyone said, look, if from my experience, maybe this is what I would do or not do or et cetera. So it was a great like bonding experience. And I saw you did lots of fun things too. Yeah. Like you had wonderful dinners and yeah. you did some activities. Yeah. And so it's almost like combining getting all that interior and inside info as mm. well as having a really lovely experience, For sure. like a vacation experience Yeah, it, well. it felt like like people, the participants were like, it, doesn't, it feels like a girl's trip. And I yeah. was like, kind of. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm on a holiday, <laughs> though I'm not. Good. Amazing. Yeah, be. I was like, I was so relaxed, and I was like, I like this is so amazing. I can't believe I'm getting paid for this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because this is fun. You know, it's what I always say. You know, you find a job that um, yeah. you love, and you never work the exactly. day in your life. It really didn't feel like work for me. Like it felt like it was fun, and I was so happy to help all these women you know, just take them to the next level in their business. And where did everybody come from? Were they, you know, from Australia? Yeah, from there were from uh, the, a from... few Australians. We had from the US, uh, we had from France, but lives in Qatar. And then we have Indonesian, an Indonesian woman as well. Oh, very excellent. Lovely. That's really yes. nice to that's Yeah, really it was nice really nice. That, yeah, that, yeah, and actually we've realised now there's a huge demand to do this uh, for people that live here. So many people that live here want to do it. Yeah. So we're actually need to sit down and think, okay, how we're going to cater for people here. So, you know, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. There's going to be some for people that live here. Maybe we'll make it shorter because uh, unless they want to go on a boat trip with me, which is, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. I will. happy to do yes. it. I mean. <laughs> so when's the next one? When's the next um, retreat happening? So the next retreat is going to be happening in, um, when is it? April. <laughs> April, May, May, May. In May. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So there's still yeah. time to book. Yeah. And we will put all the information on yeah. in our show notes as well, yeah. so, so people if you're can access in it. Interested in doing the retreat? Yeah. Next can. May we're gonna have um, a retreat. So yeah, it was really incredible. I, I was. We were all seriously finished the retreat and I felt high on life oh, I was just like which is, which is how you know yeah. retreats one of the biggest growing trends in travel it's at true. the moment you know there's retreats for literally Anything. everything fitness retreats yeah. and spiritual retreats and uh, shopping retreats and yeah. so you know why not and interiors yeah um, but I think it's more than interiors it's it's the in this the connections too right like absolutely it's not just we're not going to shops yeah and I yes. think that's there's some people that do that and they do it really well and I yeah. didn't want that I wanted to really focus on people that really love interiors or professionals in the interior design yeah. so they can get the most out of it like yeah. this is this is an investment for them it's not just let's go and have fun which yeah. we do as well but this is like you invest in on your future and on your business mm -hmm. and you're going to get results from it especially if they want to start production themselves absolutely and like yeah that. and even just be inspired and just see what's I think a lot of people all around the world, is, this is, they don't live in Bali. And Bali is like a whole new bubble when it comes to design and interiors. Yeah. They do renovations in little apartments here and there. They don't get to do beautiful houses and crazy interiors. And when they come here, they see the range of possibilities that you mm, have. Yeah. And it's absolutely inspiring for them because they're like, wow, I can do all these things. I thought, you know, you're kind of in your little cube and you're yeah. like, this is what I can do. And suddenly you just we just open the doors and they're like, wow, this mm. is amazing. I'm yeah. not sure so, it was a super incredible, oh, it was incredible experience for them. And we're excited to see where you expand um, mm -hmm. that side of the business. Well, we have loved watching your story. We love continuing to watch mm -hmm. your story. Um, you know, it's great to see somebody doing something so different on the island. Um, and we really appreciate you coming in and sharing it all mm. with us. Today. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. But we do end we do end with asking you your best Bali tip. That's uh, there's a lot of pressure because I'm sure you have lots of tips, but um whether it be about living here or working here, what's your best tip to people about 
barley? Um, I think at the end of the day, barley is not as cheap as it is. Uh, people think it's really cheap. I think everything's gone up. Inflation has affected barley as well. And I didn't have a backup plan, so I can't say have a backup plan. But <laughs> <you know. laughs> that can be your trick. Well, yeah, yeah. Maybe have a backup, <laughs> backup plan. Uh, because, you know, there is a, the, the thing about Bali, there is huge opportunities here. So if you are a person that could tune into opportunities, then you're in the right place. If you're a person that wants a salary job and is happy with that, then Bali might not be the right place for you. So this is a place for, for entrepreneurs. And you have to have that sort of spirit because otherwise you're going to have a tough time. Mm-hmm. Saying that, you still can get a job sometimes, but it's just not going to be as easy. Mm-hmm. That is yeah, actually so, a really good so it's that's amazing good tip. tip. That's, that's my tip. Just Bali is not for everyone at the end of the day. Yeah. And you just have to experience and see if it's for you. Mm. Well, amazing. thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you so much for joining us. Thank you. It was so great to hear Shayla's story and how she's made a business out of doing something that she loves some way that she loves. Yeah, and something that you and I get to do um, too with our businesses, Zem. So we lucky. certainly do. And we'll be talking more about retreats in Bali in upcoming episodes. So if you've been dreaming of your own Bali retreat or even thinking of setting up your own, then send through your questions for that episode. Yes, we do already get a lot of questions on retreats. So we hope you've enjoyed the episode. For any details, of course, they're all going to be in our show notes. You can click through the links there. And we can't wait to welcome you again for the next episode. Bye. Bye.